Ship. Sweet Living. For Thrills. Follow the adventures of Frank Farrell. Frank Farrell and his friend Jim, after fighting their way through the storm in search of gas, came to a small shack at the side of the road. Receiving no response to their knock, they entered. After a few minutes' search, they discover an old man securely tied. The boys quickly go to his aid and learn he has been robbed by the same two men who had held up Frank Farrell and his friends on the road, making away with their car. The old man offers to give the boys what gasoline he has so they may continue their drive to Syracuse, Kansas, where they're to meet Mr. Newman. Returning to the car, abandoned by the two bank robbers, the boys expect to find Helen and Spud, who were left to look out for things during their absence. Much to their surprise, when they reach the car, they find Spud lying on the ground, unconscious, and Helen gone. As the present episode opens, the boys have put Spud inside the car and are trying to bring him to. Frank is speaking. Well, what do you suppose could have happened here? If anything happens to my sister, somebody will pay for it. I can but tell you that. His head looks to me as though it's been bumped. It hasn't been cut. Boy, he's got a knot as big as an egg. Whatever happened to him sure put him out of commission. Oh, why don't he come too? We've got to find out what happened to Helen. Now, look, I'm just as anxious as you are, but we'll have just have to wait, that's all. Jim, there's someone standing out there. See by the car? Where? Oh, yeah, I see. I wonder... Oh, I believe it's the old man, isn't it? It may be. Say, go out and see if everything's all right. Okay. Is that you, Mr. Beasley? Oh, yes, yes, it's, it's me. I I was just wondering what was holding you up. Want to pull the car out now? No, not just yet. Get in the front seat here, Mr. Beasley. There you are. The wind's died down quite a bit, hasn't it? Yes, it's, it's down considerable now. Well, what's wrong? Something happened here? Yes. We left my sister and this boy here to take care of things till we left. And we found the boy on the ground unconscious, and my sister disappeared. Well, that's too bad. The boy badly hurt. What's happened to him? Oh, he's been hit on the head with something. Wait a minute. I think he's coming, too. I felt him stir a little bit then. Keep rubbing his wrist, Jim. I wish he'd hurry. Every minute lost may make it harder to find Helen. Shh. He's coming, too, all right. Spud. Spud. It's Frank and Jim. Spud. Oh. Oh, my head. Where am I? Who are you? Say, what goes on here? It's Jim and Frank, Spud. What happened? Where's Helen? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my head is sure sore. What happened to you, Spud? Think think quick and talk. What's happened to Helen? Where is she, Spud? Say, will you wait a minute till I can open my jaw? Oh, ooh. My whole head hurts, even down on my jaw. Oh, boy. Say, how did I get here? We found you out there unconscious and carried you in. Now, quick, Spud. Tell us what you know about Helen. Well, you see, we were waiting for... Ooh. Oh, gee, my jaw is sore. If you don't tell us what you know about Helen, I'll make your jaw hurt worse than it does now. Hey, you say it could make my jaw hurt worse than it does now? Yes, and I will if you don't talk. Well, what are you all so excited about? Has anything happened? <laughs> Plenty has happened. We leave you here to look after my sister. We come back and find you knocked out and my sister gone. 
Now talk a little, will you? Well, what do you think I have been doing? Just making motions with my mouth so my jaw will hurt? Come on, Spud. Don't you see Jim is worried about Helen? Yeah, and you were gone so long that she worried about you, too. We thought maybe something had happened to you. But you can see nothing's happened to us. What we want to know is what's happened to you. Well, you can see what happened to me. Look at my head. Why, say, is the boy still out of his head? He talks like he might be. Say, I resent that. Who, who said that? Never mind who said it. No, Mr. Beasley, it isn't a question of being unconscious with him. He's unconscious most of the time. Come on, Spud, what happened? Now, is that a nice way to talk in front of strangers? I ask you, is that nice? Now, Mr. Beasley is a friend of ours, Spud. He's going to give us some gasoline to pull this car out of the ditch so we can get to Syracuse. Well, what do you know about that? That's where Helen went to get some gasoline. You mean to say she left here to try and find gasoline? Yeah, but she didn't go alone. Who'd she go with? Come on, Spud, quick. Who did she go with? Well, if you guys will quiet down for a minute so I can tell you what happened here, maybe you'll find out. Well, that's what we're waiting for, so come on, talk. Boy, did I get a bump on the head. Oh, say, you know, you fellas hadn't been gone more than five minutes before... Uh Uh-oh. Look, here comes a car. Is your trunk off the road, Mr. Beasley? Yes, it's pulled over to the side. Oh, that fellow's lights are plenty strong. He can see my truck, all right. Well, I I guess they're going to stop. I wonder who this is. I don't know. We'll find out in just a minute. A woman's getting out. I'll climb up and see what she wants. She's coming down here. She's... Why, Jim... It's Helen. It sure is. Hey, sis. Oh, now she's back before I had a chance to tell you what happened. Yes, now you can save your breath. Helen. Gee, sis, I'm glad to see you. What happened? Where'd you go? Didn't Bud tell you? No, we came back and found him unconscious. Unconscious? Well, has something happened to him? Well, how is he? I think he's still unconscious. Hop in, sis. I'll close the door. How are you, Spud? Well, I don't know, Helen. I may pull through, but I doubt it. See, I told you you'd better take me with you. What happened to you? Well, I've been trying to tell these guys for the last half hour, but they want to do all the talking themselves. I can't get a word in sideways. Can you beat that guy? I'm sorry he ever came to. Jim, don't talk like that. Did, did someone hit you, Spud? Hit me? Ha <laughs> ha. Say, you should know better than that. If anybody ever hit me, they'd be the one that'd be unconscious, not me. Oh, I just bumped my head. I don't know yet, but I think I caved in that radiator. Did you notice if it's leaking? Well, how did you do it? Well, when you drove away with those people, and I stood up there on the road all alone, I thought sure I saw someone running across the highway at me. But it was only the wind blowing a big piece of paper. Well, I started down the hill, and I couldn't stop. I tripped over something, and I hit my head on the radiator of the car, and, and that's all I remember. Well, at last we found out what happened to him. Now, for goodness sakes, Helen, let's have your story. Well, there isn't time for that now. We've got to hurry. Oh, the people in the car up there, the name is William. Oh, by the way, there are five gallons of gas for us. Uh, Whose truck is that up there? It belongs to this gentleman. Mr. Beasley, my sister, Miss Newman. Well, I'm pleased to know you, miss. Thank you, sir. This Mr. Beasley's going to pull the car out of the dish for us. Oh, fine. Well, get busy, boys, and let's be on our way. I'll tell you what happened later. Oh, don't bother, Helen. I'll tell them what happened. You try. Just try. All right, Frank, let's get going. Be right with you, Jim. All right, Mr. Beasley, we'll pull her out now if you'll give us a hand. Well, yes, all right, boys. It won't take long. I guess we'd better use both of the tow ropes. It's going to be quite a pull getting that heavy car out of here. You boys can kind of get behind the car and push. All right, Mr. Beasley. Say, I wonder if that girl would mind introducing me to her friends. You know, I, I'd like awful well to meet people like the Williamses. I'd sure like to see if I could get a job with them. You know, just to take care of things around the place, maybe. Sure. See, that's a good idea. Well, after we get the car out of the ditch, I'll have her introduce you. Well, thanks. I'm surely grateful we're on our way again. And I'm certainly glad the wind has died down. Never mind the wind. Go ahead with your story. What happened? Well, just about five minutes after you boys left us, a car drove up. They stopped thinking we'd been wrecked. When I explained the situation to them, the woman felt so sorry for us that she made her husband turn back and take me to the nearest service station. Why didn't you drive the other direction and pick us up? Oh, we did, but we couldn't find you. We drove for at least two miles before we started back towards Kendall. We took the side road leading to the right. That's why you didn't see us. Sure was a break for poor Mr. Beasley, you meeting those people. Can you imagine it? That's what I call fate. The old man was just about ready to give up the fight. And to think he met the very people who needed him. They made him a good proposition, and he'll have a good home now. What kind of work is he going to do for them, Helen? Well, he'll take care of their farm. Well, it isn't exactly a farm. 
What they really want him for is to take care of their kennels. They have some very fine dogs. And old man Beasley loves dogs. He sure felt bad about looting the prince. He must know all about them because, well, Mr. Williams was perfectly satisfied with them after a few minutes' conversation. He told his wife he had a real find. Gee, I'm glad. We told the old fellow that things would brighten up for him before he knew it, but I had no idea it'd be that soon. And out of a clear sky, he was taken care of, and, well, the Williamses are happy because he's the very man they needed. Now, if we can just get your dad's car back, we'll be happy, too. Boy, this is a swell running car, isn't it? I'll say it is. Can you imagine those crooks leaving their keys in the car? Well, they were out of gas and knew the keys wouldn't do them any good. <laughs> but to leave their perfectly good car behind like this. Huh. Chances are they stole it somewhere. Goodness sake. Oh, it may be a stolen car at that. How much further is it to Syracuse? Not so very far. That was Kendall. We passed through a while ago. Syracuse isn't far from Kendall. I wonder how Spud's getting along back there. Poor oh, kid. It's a shame to make him stay back in the racing car all alone. Well, I warned him to ride up here, but he wouldn't stand for it. He said that was his job, taking care of the racing car, and that a sore head or a sore jaw just wouldn't stop him. <laughs> Good old Spud. Oh, look. An ambulance must be coming up the highway. See the red light through the rear window? Yeah, either an ambulance or a police car. Huh, they're in a hurry, all right. You better get over, Jim. Give them plenty of room to pass. I'll stop. I want to take a look at that left rear tire anyway. Just like it was going down. You stop and I'll look it over. Okay. Well, they're stopping here, too. Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim, it's a police car. A policeman's getting out. He's coming over. Take it easy, sir. Don't worry, Helen. They're not looking for us. All right, Bob. Keep them covered. This is the license number, all right. Hey, you back there, you kid. Get out of that car. What do you mean, me? Well, there's no one in there with you, is there? Not that I know of. Just me and my shadow. Now, no wisecracks. Come on. Well... Where do the rest of you think you're going? We're going to Syracuse. How long since you left Ulysses? Ulysses? Why, we were there this afternoon. Why? Oh, you want to know why? Well, you're all under arrest. Under arrest? What for? For robbing a bank and stealing a car. Oh, boy, is that a laugh. Hey, do we look like bank robbers to you? You bet your life you do. I guess you didn't get that bump on the head from making mud pies, did you? See here, officer, you've made a mistake. We didn't steal this car, and we didn't rob a bank. Yes, yes. It's always the gangster's mall that wants to square it with the cops. You're a real nice-looking kid. Too bad you got mixed up with this bunch of crooks. Hey, we're not crooks, and she's not a mall. Yeah, that's what you say. Now, just a minute, officer. You're making a big mistake. We didn't rob that bank at Ulysses. Uh-huh. How did you know there was a bank robbed at Ulysses? Uh. I think you're the one that's made the mistake, buddy. All right, move over. You're all under arrest. And now what? Will Frank and his friends be held for a crime they did not commit? Just how, if possible, will they establish their innocence? There are thrills ahead. Don't miss a single episode in the adventures of Frank Farrell. Frank Farrell. 